everybody. Welcome to Crafty Soup. My name is Misty. Today is Freebie Friday where I normally offer you a cut file and a scrapbook layout sketch. However, today I have some DIY storage options for you. Now here is the rainbow colored storage option that I have created and this is using a cut file. Now there will be a manual version of this on my blog. So if you don't have a machine or don't want to use a machine, head over to my blog, links in the description below for the manual version. But because this does take a little bit of time, the cut file really does speed up the process. So here's what is included in the cut file. You get one long rectangle storage box and one square storage box. And we'll get more into the reasons why in a moment. What I do want to let you know ahead of time is that these files do need a little bit of setup that is different in a Cricut software, in a Silhouette software, and unfortunately those are the only two softwares that I really have experience with. Those specific setups are included in this video at the end. I will put the minute marker of those, each of those up on the screen so that you can jump to that section if you want, but I wanted to show you the project first before we dive into the nitty gritty. I cut out one rectangle and two squares on my machine and that fits nicely on a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. The rectangle finished measurements are about six inches by one and a quarter inches and the two squares are slightly smaller than one and a quarter inch squared for assembly reasons which we will get to a little bit later. So let's go ahead and start assembling and cover some tips. The first piece of advice is that different papers will score and fold differently and as you can see I'm just folding up those score lines to begin the assembly. Some papers will tend to crack so I say test your paper out before you cut everything. And of course using a nice cardstock weight paper is going to be much better and much more sturdy than say something like a printer weight paper. So use a good thick cardstock for this. Once you get all your score lines folded, don't forget there is a score line in that corner piece which folds inward to create a flap in order to glue our projects together. So you want to be sure you get that. And once you have all those score line folded, you just want to add some glue to hold these all in place. I do recommend a liquid glue. I have done these with uh, strong double-sided tapes, but I find the liquid glue works better and you'll see a little sneak peek of why a little bit later. Adding glue to one triangle on the inside and one triangle on the outside is all you need. For a helping hand I will either grab a paper clip or a little binder clip to hold these flaps in place. I actually like to add two paper clips, one to the tip of the flap and one to the base of the flap and that way I don't have to hold on to these things while the glue dries. Sometimes those diagonal scores don't want to fold as well so what I do is if they're not tucking in nicely I will fold them the opposite direction first and then when I go to tuck them inward I can put my fingernail into the gap where the three score lines meet and that helps it become a tighter crease. Then I prefer to fold two flaps flat against one end and two flaps flat against the other end to create two thick sides and that really comes into play later when we configure these boxes together. Just a quick peek, I made this box with tape instead of liquid glue and you can see it's coming apart and that's why I recommend that liquid glue. If you want to make all of the colors of the rainbow like I did, don't forget about mass producing these. First I cut all of them out of the different colors, then I folded all of them and so on and so forth. The biggest tip here is on gluing and what I like to do is hold my project stable, put glue on the triangle that is just right adjacent to the square that's going to end up being the wall and then flip it over, glue right on the back side of that exact same triangle and that way I know when I fold my flaps inward there won't be excess glue on the parts that I'm going to be touching on those flaps. So here you can see I fold that flap right in where that wet glue is going to meet the side edge of this box. All right, with all of my boxes assembled, I can talk about a few configuration options as well as a few uh, pros and cons to this. Now I had been using those plastic storage racks for my tubes, which I was happy with, but they aren't quite the right size for a reorganization project that I'm doing. So I am working on these paper ones instead. Now, because these paper ones aren't as stable, that's definitely a con to these. Um, I did assemble those little cubes 
to be thick walled so that I could glue those cubes together here. I'm just kind of mock gluing them together and showing what I would do, putting glue and then using the paper clips to hold them in place. Now you can just do that and have a two storage or you can slip those in and glue those in place into the longer one and have a four storage. You can take these cubes, put them on the ends and have six long storage Whatever configuration you want to have these in, you can. So that's part of the reason why I like the paper. Um, I like the paper because it's paper, it's recyclable. I like the paper because I can color coordinate it with my tubes. I can create the size that I need that fits my shelf just right. I can add on to it if my collection grows. And, you know, it's kind of cheaper than those plastic things are anyway. And as you can see me doing here, I'm storing other things besides just those tubes in there. I've got some watercolor paint, some blender brushes. You could just store the blender foams in there, but as you see me shaking it, it does flop over. So that is definitely not as sturdy. And despite the con of them not being as sturdy, the pro of them being sizable to what I need is perfect for this reorganization project that I'm doing of repurposing this IKEA CD bookcase into a color case. And so I'm finding these little paper storage options to be just what I need. And maybe you will find them useful for your storage as well. Hello, everybody. Future Misty here. I just wanted to pop in to say a couple of things. After I produced this video, I realized that I can create a Cricut Ready file for you as well as a Silhouette Ready file for you. And both of those links will be available on my blog, as will the download to the plain SVG file so that you can access Silhouette directly or Cricut directly or the SVG if you have another machine. And if you still want to learn about alterations in the Cricut software or the Silhouette software when you're working with files that have cut and score properties, go ahead and watch the rest of this video. Otherwise, you can just hit my blog and the links are down below and get this file. Now we need to step back in time to the beginning to set up these files in our particular software. First up, I'm going to be working in the Cricut software. So I have got my software opened up here onto a brand new canvas. And the first thing we need to do is upload our project. So I'm going into the upload file. I'm going to choose files from my computer system and it's already been played with. So it's right there where I need it to be. These files look a little odd when you first open them up. They just look like these little hash marks and that's because the outer line is a white color and it's hard to see um, otherwise, but it's there, I promise. Once you have that uploaded, you can click on it and add it to your canvas and that will show up on your canvas. The next thing you need to do is that these are grouped together when you open them up into Cricut. So you have to click that ungroup button to get individual pieces. Now you've got this box with all of these lines in it and we need to not work with that box, but we need to select all of these lines. And to do that, you can hold on the Macintosh, it's the shift key or the command key and select all of those lines and then go up to this menu. This is the important part of this project and make those lines into score lines. Their visual graphic will change to show you that they're score lines. If you don't have a score tool for your machine, you might need to use the cut tool, which will then cut dash lines, which act as score lines. So just know that ahead of time, that um, depending on the age of your machine, you might end up with that. Now there's another very important step after that, but before I get to that, I'm gonna copy and paste this square so that like I said, I'm gonna have two of those squares that will fit on my 12 by 12 paper. And here is the important step. You need to select those squares or rectangles and hit this button down here, which is the attach button. If you don't hit that attach button, let me show you what happens when you go to make this project all of these lines separate out and Cricut tries to fit them all together nice and compactly. That is not what you want. You don't need random score and cut lines all over your paper. So you need to hit that attach button for each box. And then once you have those um, attached, you save your file so that when you go to use this in the future, it will be ready to go for you. 
Let's talk about doing this in the Silhouette machine instead. Uh, it's important to know that I am using Silhouette Studio version 4.4, but the most important part is I have the Designer Edition. Only the Designer Edition will allow you to import SVG files. So I am opening up my software and I've got my canvas opened up here. The first thing I am going to do is go up to that menu and open my file. I will navigate to my hard drive wherever I have that file saved and select it. Now, when I click this OK button, these, this is going to open and it looks wrong when you first open it. And there's a reason behind that. And unfortunately, I'm not quite sure the best approach to fixing that at this point. But here is my workaround. There is a box around these lines and those lines are the score lines for the project. Now that box is currently white and you can't see the lines on the mat. So here's what I do. I, at first I was <laughs> going to the wrong area. I need to go to this line option section and it's gonna open another set of controls. I want to go to this colorful one because that is going to change the colors of my lines. And that's important for two reasons. One, so that you can see the color of that line and two, so that you can change the properties of that line or how the machine behaves with that line. Now I did change that line to red at first, but because um, kind of the boundary line uh, on my mat is red, I'm gonna change it to black so that I have different colors in my visual field. So now if I click outside of that, you can see that I have a black outside cut line and these blue lines are gonna end up being score lines. I need to repeat this process with the other shape that I have in here and turn that line black. Now I say these are cut lines and score lines, but we need to tell the machine that. I know that, the machine doesn't yet know that. So in order to do that, you have to send it to the machine first. And that happens up here with the send button. So when I click that send button, more setting options will show up for me. And within those settings, I need to go to this section, which is the line option. And this is where you tell your machine how to treat each color of line. And that is why we colorize them. So the blue lines are there. If you click on that blue box, you're going to just select the behavior of the blue lines. Come down to this drop down menu. Now you can change that up there in the bigger menu, but in this drop down menu, you can change from a cutting behavior to a scoring behavior. So you want those lines to be scoring. Now they automatically default to cutting. So your black lines will show that they are cutting already. But if for some reason you need to change them, repeat this process, click on that color, go down to that menu and change the behavior. Also in that menu, you need to select your paper type in order to give it the correct pressure and thickness information for its scoring and cutting behaviors. So once that is all done and set up, you can hit that send button at the very bottom there and you will get your projects cut. All right, that is the project I have to share with you today. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask either here or over on my blog. I'd be happy to help you out and answer them. I hope you do find this project helpful and until I see you next time, have an artful day.